Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter. I was recently working on a project where I got to interview a bunch of typewriter collectors. Now I didn't get to put all of their interviews into my main video that I was working on, but I did want to share some of the amazing conversations that I had with a bunch of typewriter collectors and all of these new people I got to meet. I grew up with my grandfather in central Massachusetts and he was a uh, he was a writer for the Worcester Telegram and Gazette which um, is a newspaper from central Mass and um, and so he was a, a war correspondent in World War II and uh, the reason why I got into typewriters is because when I was growing up with him um, in his office he had typewriters that he used to write um, his articles on for the Worcester TNG. I go under the, the moniker Walking Mall Poet, and what I do is I'm one of the typewriting street poets, so I bring typewriters out into public spaces, write poems on the spot for people. When I when I got that first typewriter, my um, my friend and I, uh, we, uh, we, we, we got it at a church sale. It was like five, 10 bucks or something like that. Uh, had a working ribbon. We literally brought it home and wrote a plan for world domination on it. We were two kids just having fun. And the the, the nostalgia of it, the total, um, I forgot what the word is, but it, it, you know, like the, the anachronism of it, that it was so out of place in the world that we were living just made us, took us back to a, a time of, of intrigue and, and suspense. And we just had so much fun writing on it. And I still even have that piece of paper that we wrote on back then. An, an antique object, an old object, holds energy, it holds memory for me. Uh, so when I hold an old coin, um, what are the tales? What are the stories that it's experienced in its existence um, that I can draw from? So I started looking around in my community locally. We have, uh, we have a great shop, Ace Typewriter uh, Sales and Repair here locally. Um, they've been here forever and amazing amazing people down there uh but i started looking at uh this actually was the very first one that i had put into my collection uh it's a 1930 royal uh model 10 and uh actually just got to replace this back plate here because my original one didn't have the logoing on it so i've been on a hunt uh to get it back to uh as close to original as possible um, so from there it folded into, oh, I'll just get one more. No, I promise, just one more, sweetie. Uh, <laughs> now here in her home, I have probably 20 typewriters, and then I have another 15 in storage, and then another three or four at my home that I am uh, rehabbing, I call it. Uh, it wasn't until I joined the military and my job is electronics all day. Like I, I sit in front of a computer and if I'm not sitting in front of a computer, I'm working on the servers for the computer. And so there came this point in time where I was like, I gotta get away from this. Like it's like go to work, play video games, kind of sort of, and then come home and it's like computers all day. So it wasn't until uh, I got a hold of one uh, just as like, you know, let's go on Facebook Marketplace and check out what uh, what's available. And I was like, oh cool, There's I actually have my first one sitting right next to me right now. Um, so because I can repair them, um, and the reason I really got into them though is just the disconnect from, from anything electronic, digital, a anything. I, I can, as we found out the other day, lost power at my house, and I was like, ah, I'm gonna sit and type my typewriter, and my wife's like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm gonna write. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay. Um, we've become so detached with the modernization with our cell phones, with our computers, with Zoom meetings. Uh, we don't have to actually talk to people in person anymore. We don't, uh, we don't have to handle paper anymore. It's all digital. Um, if we do have uh, a printout from our printer, it's usually just to sign something and send it back digitally anyways. Um, for me, uh, it's tactile. I want to feel the response of the keys. I want to feel the paper. Again, being a, a writer for some time, um, it's about holding a book uh, instead of reading a digital copy online. Don't get me wrong, I have my library card and I read plenty of those, but there's always got to be a book. I don't know, they're kind of cool. So when I worked for my friends in 2014, I'd always go into their apartment and they'd have them just like lined up. 
and it was kind of like like in boxes you just never knew what you were gonna get you could have like a really fancy looking box open it up and the thing inside's like super dusty doesn't work because no one's taking care of it we can have like a super destroyed box and open it up and there's just like a gorgeous like mid condition 1940 smith corona um so i don't know i love that they're all very surprising they all kind of have personalities in a way um and there's also just something super rewarding about like putting paper into a machine typing and it's right and it's just right there you pull it out and it's done um so what i find and i've heard so many people say um that have bought typewriters for me is just like how careful they have to think before they type something because there's no backspace once it's there it's there and there's something like super genuine and cool about that I joined an online mailing group for snail mail and there was a challenge called a typewriter letter. And for me, that was sort of the gateway. It was the reason, the excuse, the justification to buy a typewriter. And it kind of was uh, uh, addictive. I love vintage um, items. I like uh, things that are timeless and classic. And I think typewriters are that for me. You know, for me, when I write, it's just it's it's a different experience and the product is different. So if I write on a computer, I kind of have one thing. And then if I write on a typewriter, it's a different sound and a different feeling. And, and also there's some something about the act of of typing again that that is, is a great way to refine and edit. So rather than sitting down and go, okay, I'm gonna edit this piece or edit this ad, but just the act of taking it from the typewriter, um, which is right here, um, and, and then bringing it over to the computer and typing it in again, it changes a little bit. So, in, and it's really kind of funny because most people have typewriters will say, you know, when I type on the typewriter, I'm, I'm very careful and I'm thoughtful and I'm, and I'm slow. And that's what most people say. And for some reason, for me, it's the opposite. On the typewriter, I'm very, I'm very aggressive and I hit the keys hard and 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 I write things three or four times and it's just kind of just bleh, it just all comes out on the typewriter so that's that's sort of my my process if you will. And, and that's why I like it it's just just a and it's a little weird I'm a little eccentric so I like that but but the feeling of it and the typing of it is just you know it's a unique experience and it and it produces a remarkably different result it's been um it's been fun discovering the things about them online too. I love to know the history of my typewriters. I wonder about who owned them last and where they've traveled and what they've used them for and um, learning a little bit more about how they were made and who um, designed them and built them, especially the war era ones when metal was um, you know, quite a serious commodity and some typewriter manufacturers had to shut down and sort of a rejig for the war effort, um, but they're 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 little works of art, I think, in some of the stylings and and the um, um, the, the craftsmanship that went into them. My I have an Etsy shop called uh, the Brown Fox Typewriter Co. Um, oh, seen that yeah yeah that's me. Um, right now it's on vacation because of COVID, and I, yeah, I don't really want to ship anything right now. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I just have a little Etsy shop. I don't have many online at a time because I have a full-time job. Um, but yeah, basically in my spare time, whenever I have some time, I'll uh, like clean them out, uh, make sure they're working, take some photos and then post them. And then, you know, get a little bit of extra dollars, but then also, you know, I'll save a couple typewriters I like for myself when I come across, uh, yeah, when I come across any on my bucket list. I think what has continued, apart from just loving them, really appreciating them for um, the, you know, both simple and complex machines that they are. Um, I continue to collect because my partner and I started um, an arts organization called the Tack Bear Press. And I began, um, like many people have done, having um, type-ins or type-outs, um, so an outdoor type-in. And then I morphed that into having poetry-centered type-ins, where I'd ask people to, um, you know, either type up poetry that they've already created or just create something on the spot and submit that to, um, we have a, a couple of poetry vending machines. So I retrofitted an old sticker machine to now vend poetry. So it's a single poem um, 
per sort of like 50 cents that you put into it. And it's all manual as well. It's not electronic. And, um, and that's been really fun to have like community members submit to the poetry vending machine and have, you know, other people uh, in the area kind of get their poems, either from people they know or don't know more often. I was um, looking for kind of a new thing to do with um, my poetry. I'm a big poetry writer and my wife, um, uh, very supportive of my creative work, suggested that I bring a, a typewriter out to our local, local town's walking mall and write poetry for people. And then I started bringing typewriters uh, out onto the walking mall and from there, the idea of having different typewriters, um, collecting different machines, being able to kind of see the different types of, of machines that were out there and use various machines and make it into something where every time I was out there, I was having something different, really intrigued me. Um, the biggest angle I think for me when it comes to um, type collecting typewriters is, is having typewriters that are portable, but then on the flip side, also having typewriters that are really unique. So it's just been interesting because if I can go out to the type to the walking mall each time with a different typewriter, uh, it intrigues people, it becomes kind of part of the, the niche of it. And, but at the same time, I love seeing how the machines developed over the years, the, um, the diversity of them. So the community is really great. But I wrote this, I wrote a poem at Herman's, which is a famous collector's gathering that happens every, um, every summer, hopefully summer and fall, hopefully it happens this summer too. And I wrote a poem for him at the, at the gathering. And it was really about how there's, there's a magical work to these machines. And kind of skipping over this part, one of the biggest pivotal points for me, and I'm gonna go get it right back here. When I started getting into this was when my parents got me for Christmas, Richard Polt's book. Um, and it kind of went full circle when Richard Polt signed it at Herman's when I went last year. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I, I was fascinated to find that there was a whole group of people out there that were interested in collecting these things and revolutionizing writing and that kind of how it ties into the art. And I think people are, it, it, I think it is that tactile sensation and that, that analog feeling of creating something as you're typing. It feels so permanent, but, it, but it's, it's, it's also, I think there's a work aspect to it. I think that people like, and, and, and also it just has a little bit of, for some reason there's just this little bit of magic into it. Like if you see a little kid type on a typewriter, they are just amazed by it. And, and the mechanical nature of, gee, I pressed this letter and, and I heard this thing happen and clank, 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 and then there's that letter on the paper. And it's just this, it, it's just this work, uh, this, this feeling of accomplishment, this feeling of work, and, and just that being connected to it. I like old cars too. I have an old car, and I think it's it's so similar. Um, my old car doesn't have power, anything. It, you know, it's mechanical, everything, and you feel very connected to the process. It's dangerous. It's smelly. It's noisy. You know, it's not particularly good at, at that. But but you feel so connected to it. It's a unique feeling, and that's that's to me. If I had to sum it up in one thing, I think it's connection. Now, is it good for the hobby? It's great because you know there's still lots of machines, and it's nice for people to save them. Um, but use them. They don't belong in museums. They belong on people's desks where they can type on them. Uh, you, you know, and I think that's that's the that's the cool part about it. I, I, I sold one typewriter to a person who just wanted to have it on a shelf, and I was kind of sad. You know, everybody else wants to wants to use them and and, and, and type on. Them. And I think that's it, it, again back to the old car thing. An old car doesn't belong in a museum. It belongs out on the road doing what it should do. And a typewriter belongs on a desk. You know coming up with ideas or writing letters or whatever you want to do. But no, that's uh, collecting is about following your passions. And if you don't follow your passions, you might as well sit in a cubicle in your home uh, and do something for other people. Um, it's something I will never allow myself to release. Um, and even though others say enough's enough, uh, <laughs> it never will be but uh, so yeah that's uh that's part of part of why i collect in my my enjoyment but the whole typewriter effect like i don't know i've i've always found it a bit weird i guess i'm getting inquiries from like younger and younger people a lot of kids um 
around Christmas, I'll get like emails from parents being like, is this suitable for my kid? I want the best typewriter for my kid. Um, yeah, I guess it's just getting in like a whole different generation into typewriters. I think especially with vintage items, um, it's almost like there's like, there's like a limited number, right? Once you find like, at least the typewriters, like a really mint typewriter, that's a certain model that you've been looking for. It's like, cool, like, I don't know when I'm gonna see another one of these, if ever, so I'm gonna keep it. Um, I know in my family, one of my uncles, he does the same thing I do, but with fountain pens, and he's really established. Um, and he has like this crazy collection of fountain pens. And I think, I don't know, his ideas are very similar. It's just, you know, there's a limited number, and if you find that one that's kind of special, then like, might as well hold on to it. But there's gonna come a day when, you know, we're, we're gonna be looking, like I'll be in my probably 60s or 70s, and I'll be like, wow, I've got this 150 year old machine right now, and no one knows how to fix it other than me because quite literally the knowledge has been lost. So uh, yeah, I would encourage people to get into, into collecting them, fixing them, repairing them, using them. Because the, the more that we keep the history alive of these ancient machines, um, and the more that people get fed up and, and tired of using you know electronic devices and the internet and being connected nonstop, I think the more we're gonna see uh, that, that typewriter revolution that everyone talks about, the, the return to uh, mechanical plinking and, and, and the days gone by of tack, tack, tack instead of you know mechanical keyboards. So um, yeah, it's, that, that, that's, that's all I really have to say about it. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video today. I really enjoyed getting to meet all of these new typewriter people. If you wanna check out some of their social medias, I have them all linked below in the description. I wanna thank you for joining me today and remind you that you're just my type, writer.